Are we starting? Yeah, you're clapping for yourself, bro. Fantastic. I'm clapping for you. For me? With YouTube viewer. Today, on the Whiskey Entitled, we're going to be talking about uh, finished American whiskeys uh, and that long, weird, complicated story. And we're going to be talking about whiskey influencers being influenced because it seems to be something that you guys want to talk about according to an Instagram poll or seven. So let's do it. Really? Sometimes I just want to leave that on for a while because it's it such is. a cool I, song. It's fun. I've listened to the whole song a number of times at work. Uh, yeah, that was a little bit too much hype for an intro, but it's really weird. Yeah, why not? This is also really weird. I don't know why I'm showing this on the screen because I just talked to a guy who bought a welder from me, and this is who he works for. I was like, uh, talk, we were talking about day jobs, and he works like digging up gold. I was like, what? What? what it was really weird. Really? Like he digs up gold in the Bering Sea, and I was like, I'm sorry, what? So That's it was really, cool. it's just really, really weird and cool conversation. Dram for all, what's up? Dram dude. Cody, what's up? What's up? Um, all right. Yeah. Wait, I don't know where we're going to start because this is a whiskey show. Yeah. So what is going to be in your glass? Let's, uh, let's do that. I'm going to, I'm opening my glass. I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it until we get to the part where we talk about the new stuff we got. Ah, okay. Well, I'm going to be talking about uh, this one. Damn it, man. I really need your toppers because of this bottle. Which bottle? Oh, you're going to say Westland. Yeah, I'm going to say Westland. I already know it. I already replaced it. That was the fastest one for me to replace. So I'm going to have their port cast, which is going to be talking about our finish. Ooh, that's later. pretty glass. That's but, um, pretty yeah. flashy. Hey, Habs. Um, but yeah, so um, I have no... Ooh, Scotch Mocha. I have no new bottles this week because it's arriving on Thursday. I have two new bottles. I got here today. So there you go. So let's lead into yours. So oh. what's in your glass so you can talk about Wait, it? Wait, what's in your glass? Oh, it's the Westland, Westland. one. Just the regular Westland? No, Westland 3786, which is a port finished. Oh, a specific single cast. Habs, what's up? It is their I see it. Um, regular malt, the one that you like, but finished yeah. in port. Oh, All of its be... life, too. So espresso plus sweet port. That could be weird. Mm, so good. Uh, what I'm sipping on is one of the two bottles that I got this week. And by this week, I mean today. The first one is this right here. It's Cosmo Whiskey Society. Yep. Ooh, cheers. It's Cosmo Whiskey Society Rum. This is the R113. It is a young Jamaican rum. Oh, Jameson impressive. Yeah. It's really, really tasty. The only mm. thing is, like, it's crazy, crazy hot. Like, it needs some water. And I gave it really? some water. I've never thought about rum with water. I mean, it's cast strength, and it's only 57.5, but, like, for, it's just hot. Huh. Interesting. I don't know why. Probably because, you know, Jamaica. You kind of thing. And then the other bottle I got, also SMWS, is Ice Cream and Gorse by the Sea, which is just old Pulteney. Yep. Aged for 11 years with magic. So it should be good. I haven't cracked it yet. I'm really excited. excited for I figured one. I'd give this rum some time and then I'll, I'll crack it. I'm excited because in a couple of weeks I'm going to get to see you and I get to try that stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. What's going on here? Jameson Crested in my. Oh, Jameson Crested sounds good. Westland on Thursday. Yeah, Cody, have fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, enjoy it, man. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. Legend Wine and Sherry finished. Yeah, that's a new uh, new whiskey that came out. I haven't what seen What kind of it like red bit. wine? I don't know. I've seen okay. it around. Um, I've seen it around on the Instagrams. I haven't seen it around here in Oregon yet. So, but yeah, no, great pickups. Um, in all honesty, my subscription to Scotch Malt Whiskey Society is going to end soon. So I'm at the point where I'm doing that same thing again. Where like, is it worth it or not? Yeah, it's going to end soon. But so, remember what happened last time. Know, so maybe, maybe I'll talk about it in the next episode, like these clubs and stuff. Maybe that'll be the next topic. That, that could be a good topic. Yeah, whiskey clubs. Yeah. All right, so let's jump into topics since we're talking about topics. Um, uh, let's unless... do the one topic first, and the second topic second. Okay, sounds good. So whiskeys that you have that are All finished. Right. So let's get this out of the way. So we're both we're arguing on the TTB. Uh, so I was under the impression that you couldn't be a bourbon that's finished. If you are finished, you are an American whiskey, yeah. and. And that's how I always thought it was. And I agree. Which... I agree on that point too. But when I read the TDB, it said like what? So it says made in the U.S. right or distilled in the U.S. Fifty-one percent right. corn, hundred and sixty proof, or eighty percent alcohol by volume right. went in it, right? And then it actually doesn't say years for bourbon whiskey. Straight bourbon whiskey. You talked about it. It's two years plus has to be labeled on the bottle after or if more than four or is it under four? Under four. Yeah, it's so never labeled. The part that, that confuses me or that is a bit vague is the point where it has to be in new charred oak barrels 
understand but it doesn't say it has to be its whole life it just has to be in that new charcoal barrels could it be transferred right. later right but if it's gonna be bourbon it has to be that's what makes bourbon bourbon because new yeah so okay there we go so what cody just said is what i've always read so it has to no. say finished like you have to put finished in there you can say what it starts as but it's still going to be finished in something like it I mean, is it technically bourbon then once you finish it in something else? Yeah, so this one here, so this one is Freeland Spirits, right? On the label, yep. it says bourbon whiskey, and I know it's finished in, uh, in Pinot Noir casts, 100%, okay. right? So there's no Pinot Noir written on this or age or whatever. It just says distilled in Indiana, duh. That's where they get their stuff from, Freeland Spirits, and then distilled from grain, age three years. So it has an th age statement on it. Yeah. Okay, and then I have Woodford so, Reserve, which is a big one. Oh, we're not going to go back and forth? Okay, fine, go back and forth. My bad. We're talking about the topic. Yeah, my bad. This says bourbon too, right? It does. It says bourbon, and it says it says finished specifically finished in Malmsey casks, Malmsey yeah. Madeira casks. So this the same boat. So Bell Mead, it is bourbon. Yeah, and it just it always has to say finished. Really? So they That's missed the... all these labels? Like this bullshit, dude. They didn't miss like every label. It's possible they missed all the Crown Royal labels that said bourbon mash, and they couldn't legally say bourbon mash. Yeah, that's true. But then they pulled that back, right? When they found out, they pulled it back. They, so. Yeah, pulled it back since I've been buying them off the shelf. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But it's like it's like anything else. It's like just because they say it doesn't make it so. The TTB was just created so they could protect yeah. American bourbon. But at this point, it's like I think American bourbon's doing all right. Yeah. Well, and this one here. So Woodford, like big company. So people are going to watch this. This is their special collections, right? Brandy cast finish. It says Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey finished in brandy cast. So maybe you have to have the word finished in there. Yeah, you have. It has to say finished. Finished. Correct. So, Correct. but then this would like said, like this should be said. bourbon then, right? Or is this telling you that hey, it was maybe, bourbon? Or maybe it's not. So it was bourbon, and then they finished it, so it has to have both worlds or something. So or maybe wait, does it say bourbon on it specifically? Yeah, it says bourbon. It says Kentucky straight bourbon too. It's not just bourbon. Okay, so it has to be at least yeah. There you go, at least two years old. Yeah. And that's you purchased a, bourbon mash. I purchased it because I like the name plus the controversy. I don't think it'll be collectible because they made so many. I, yeah, but I think it's just I, I opened one to try it and it's meh. It's not even good. I think it's a, it's, it's the a worst good history part. to see how like people went up in arms when it was like, hey, this is it's, yeah bourbon plus. It's bourbon plus. I like. The, sorry, that just got me. No, just like and the reason why like I want to really talk about it is just the fact that you know, like I mentioned before, I might be hosting a class of whiskey and stuff like that, and I want to give the best knowledge that I can. Of course, right? So it's like. Where do you go where some some places they call it finished bourbons or finished whiskeys and stuff like that? But most of the time I'm seeing a lot of these, like especially Bell Mead, right? It's a known brand. People talk about it and it says bourbon, right? It does. It says giant bourbon sign. And then it says, uh, you know, whatever is finished in next to that. So if it says bourbon, it says bourbon. Yeah. And then one says Madeira here and the other one says Cognac because that's what they're finished in. Yeah, Christian. But they both say finished in. Is it Northern Harvest Rice supposed to be like one of the best ones, right? So Northern Harvest, where I got awards, I, I didn't, I don't, it's not that good. I have had a good crown. It was a barrel pick. It was a hand pick. It was like literally. I haven't had a good crown. It was really good. It was a really, really good hand pick. I was really surprised by it. Crown's always been a mixing bourbon for me for some reason. Or, sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, whiskey, Crown and Coke. Bourbon. Whiskey. Yeah. Crown and Coke. All day. Uh, another one that says bourbon on it, mm -hmm. but it says bourbon and it says finish. Is Here we go. Kentucky. Yeah. Straight bourbon. The port one, right? Yeah. Literally port finished bourbon. From 1792. Yeah. It literally says in the front, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey finished in port barrels. So, all of that yeah. on the bottom. So, like they, so the TTB can't miss all that stuff. So it must be like you can count it as I a bourbon. Something... If it started off as a bourbon, you can count it as a bourbon. But you have to distinguish that it's finished. <clears throat> that that probably could yeah. be it, right? Yeah. yeah. Maple flavored crown is the best in Coke, maybe. I don't mind maple flavored whiskeys because they do taste really good for, to me because they're sweeter. <clears throat> But I've had some really bad ones too. So. I'm not even surprised. Yeah. All right. Um. Oh, my bad. So here's... I have one that that did get missed by the TTB. If you want to see something really cool, go for it. Go for it. So this is from DC. It's just called Untitled Whiskey. Oh, it's right? the eight one, right? All it says is number three. It says batch three, and it says nothing on here about anything else. It just says it's produced in DC. So it doesn't even say it's a whiskey. So this is fin I know for a fact they took uh, X bourbon barrels put coffee beans in them, turn them into coffee barrels, and then put the whiskey back in and age the whiskey. <laughs> That's what this is called. So it's like common, so, coffee finished? Yeah, but what do you call this? Like, it doesn't have a designation, and I'm assuming that this is legal because it's made here. Yeah. I, like, 
it, but it doesn't have anything else on it. It just says Untitled Whiskey. It literally has no information on the bottle anywhere about what the piss this is. Uh, Christian, I can't, dude, because like I've had some maple uh, <clears throat> bourbon with, is it? I think it was Dr Pepper. It was really good. But you gotta think about it though. It's a, it's a sweet tooth. It's not like I'm, uh, you know, analyzing it and sipping it and all that kind of stuff. I'm just drinking it. <laughs> it's for cocktails. Yeah, dude, it's a drink. Um, so for me, we're going into the not the bourbon front, but the whiskey front, right? So Westland here, they have a bunch of stuff here. This one's their port finish, so this is their. Uh, American whiskey that is basically very similar to a scotch in production and aged in port cast for most of its life. So a lot of times Westland put it in more of a used oak barrels, but um, this one was a port. So I really like this. I like port finishes if you guys don't know. So that's one thing I do search for. Um, hence the reason why I'm not buying a lot of whiskey. So, yeah. That's really weird. Are you guys trying to promote your own whiskey to us? We don't have a whiskey to promote. Don't know what you're talking about, but... I mean, it is whiskey that sits on my shelf. Technically, it's my whiskey, so kind of. What we're talking about? Salty caramel is bad in every state. I don't know. Uh, no, it's something that um, that Dram for All said. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I didn't know what that means. No, uh, I wish we had a whiskey. That'd be pretty cool. The whiskey entitled whiskey. Oh, about? because it was named untitled. No, it's just called untitled whiskey. It's uh, yeah. When Distilling did this, I don't know. So they have their they have rye and they have other types of whiskey that they, and other types of, like gin and stuff that they make. But the Untitled series, they do – these are like weirdo finished whiskeys that they do specifically to, to do weird experiments. So, yeah. So, they just call them Untitled. Um, a lot of the um, big companies Sorry. do – Sorry. went over my head. Yeah. One of the uh, – most of the big companies do experiments like with rice and all those different stuff. I think that's what they do at uh, 1.8, right? Like they just do the random – and that's what they call them the Untitled yeah. series. Yeah. I mean we bought into a barrel that's going to be 100% malted rye. It happens. We're serious here. We don't joke. <laughs> Except for the times when we're joking. Yeah. Uh, all Go right. Uh, I thought I'd throw this out there. So this is whiskey distilled from a rye mash finished in limousine oak barrels. Perhaps you've heard of it. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. uh, Travis pretty much sent like one of these to, I feel like, every Instagram on Instagram. So I agree on that one. Yeah. It's pretty slick. It's not bad. I think it's, I think it's it was good. more of the, if you guys see their, um, what was it called? That what was it. That's not a ton still. What was it called? Mash. What are you talking about? No, their barrel thing, Bobby, that they have. Never mind. I'm going to talk about it later. Do you remember? You know, I had the, like, the... Mash ton? No, that's like eight barrels or whatever dripped down. Was it a ton? It was a ton, right? It's like their mash ton, but it was like with eight barrels instead of one giant. That's barrel. weird. Anyway. I don't know what that is. All right. So, uh, I got, since you already say <clears throat> it, the VA port that you don't like, but I like. And then this uh, cider that I, it's not bad you really like, so. But yeah, as you guys know, port finish uh, for VA they get stuff from Scotland. They blend it with their own stuff and then they age it in a cast like the cider cast and this one's the port cast one. Yeah, what do you call that? So mine's a cider cast finished Virginia Highland whiskey. What the poop does that mean? Well, it means that this is a so mine was a port cast finished. Virginia Highland whiskey make basically means for them is they blend their own. Virginia whiskey and Scotland Highland whiskey. Right. So that's, I'm just saying that's the weirdest. It, it, there's no Virginia Highland. It's a, no, I, I understand on that point. Um, it's kind of like what, um, whistle pig did with their farm stock. They got Canadian whiskey, they got Canadian whiskey with their own whiskey, blended it together and made farm stock. Christian. Hey, that's fine, man. Um, for some weird reason, I do believe that, um, a lot of people do like this, but I've heard it's very polarizing, kind of with yeah, you, right? Because it's gross. I actually like it. That's just funny. Uh, Dram for all cider finish. It's the only one well, that I, I like. It. Yeah, I, and I don't. Mind I it, literally so. do not like their port. I don't like their their shard was okay. It had like shard viscosity, yep. like you know buttery viscosity, like regular chardonnay, but it did not have like. It still had a funky flavor profile. I don't like most of what they put out. They're well aware of it. We've got a relationship. Yeah. But um, their cider cask gets me every time. Actually, their brewer's one, a horrible nose, fantastic palate. I don't think I have that one. <laughs> that was another weird one, the brewer's cask. That was a freak one. But uh, if I was going to drink something with port and sherry in it, this right here from – this is a local one in Maryland called okay. Blackwater. Never heard of that one. But they finished this in port and sherry and like that's, – oh. That's so dark, dude. It's crazy. Oh, yes, and it's freaking delicious. 
just try it yeah, out. Yeah, Jam for All, hit me up on Instagram. I'll just send you a sample. It'll make your life easier, and then you can try some of mine because I like it. All right. I only have one more bottle, by the way. Uh, I'm done, so that's all you know. Oh, and the last bottle that I have, uh, Maryland Local. Technically, it's not because it's just MGP, but this is finished in Muscatel. Uh, in case you're into this, Sagamore Rye, it's okay. There's something weird about the barrels they're getting from MGP, and I don't know what it is. So uh, I don't want him to show that bottle. Why? Why? <laughs> I'm fucking with you. But yeah. You don't like it? No. I mean, it's a pretty bottle. I love their bottle. It looks shape. like a cricket bat. Shaped like diamond. Yeah, it's shaped like a cricket bat. That's actually the perfect way to describe it because that's what it is. Yeah. And it's got like cool notches all over it. And it's a really pretty bottle, but like it, something about what they're getting from MGP is no bueno. So can't get into so it. Which one was that one? Muscatel finish, which is okay from them. Yeah, so um, let us know what that's you guys nice like. Product. Um, We definitely showed stuff we did like. Oh, because you, like. you work for so. Nike. Uh, but yeah, no. Um. I re so me personally, I hope that we get more bourbon, rye, and American whiskeys finished and stuff. Because bourbon, in particular, as you know, it's very limiting. So having that extra uh, flavor, non limitations of like the cask. Yeah. the cask alone makes it difficult. And that People complain about why aren't there any old American whiskeys? Because they've got to be like literally virgin oak yes. casks, which are. And super, super once you potent. get past like what eighteen to twenty three, it's very, very hard to get past that. Yeah. So unlike where scotches are, where they're in um, second fill or first fill barrels, where it takes twice as long to age things to get that barrel finish in there, they can mix and move stuff. So that's where I feel as though that. And I know you're not a big fan of bourbon, but for me, it's like I think that's one Bourbons. of the biggest limiting factor. I like some bourbons. Some bourbons, but you have to admit, you like more scotch than bourbon. Mm, really? I like whiskey. I just like whiskey. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. All right. So, all those. on like to rum. the second topic of today, and we're going to talk about influencers being influenced. Second topic. Boom. Oh, I should read it exactly the way that it was posted to us on Instagram because it was interesting. So, somebody, I, I think the reason I want to talk about this is because of some contention that's happened on Instagram before. So, we're going to get into this and. Sorry for the drama. Make sure pour a drink. It's going to be a bit of a salty one. So I'm not going to say who sent this, but they said, uh, how these so-called influencers get free bottles and post that they like it when I know they don't. Okay. This is a game of integrity, all right? Yeah. You have a lot of influencers out there who are getting a lot of stuff. And, and we're both included. We're not going to take our stuff yeah, out of it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it right now. Actually, it's funny because of all these bottles that I just showed you guys, only one of them was given to me. All the rest of these I spent with my stupid money. Like that rum and that new whatchamacallit from Scotchman Whiskey Society cost me $250 to get shipped here. was given here. to me. So this was given to me. It's funny because I have one. They gave me two of those, and I literally didn't drink either of them. Because so, you were going right. to send that to me. Yeah, I'll take correct. It it. And I will put it in the trash can. So here is the limousine rye, the only thing on my table that was sent to me. This, it's pretty good. It's not bad. It's three years, aged in American oak barrels, and finished in limousine barrels. It's not any different than Bren. I think flavor-wise, this is a little more complex than Bren, but not any better. I think, I think Bren it's pretty much. Than Bren, but that's me. I think Bren kills the game for just like French regular limousine rye. French, uh, limousine yeah. oak. Yeah, whiskey. I think they kill it. I think whatever the rye in this adds doesn't add much. Not enough that it blows my mind. So if you're looking for honest reviews that people will give you because they got free stuff, like would I put hashtag ad in my stupid whatchamacallits? I do. Yeah, I'll put them in my post so that you know what's going on. But am I going to let the fact that it's free influence my decision? Heck no. So you have to learn which Instagrammers will tell you the truth. Like I've gotten a couple of bottles that I'll tell you are straight trash. And then you have to learn which Instagrammers will sugarcoat everything because they want to get more work. Yeah. And that's the problem is like if you want to do Instagram full time, you're going to really have to walk the fine line of telling people – not telling people that it's bad but telling yeah. people that it's not your favorite. So, and that's what people do. So for me, I think it, the first things first is find people that are closer to your palate. That's, a, that's the first Correct. thing you find, right? So um, that's how I met Wally. Um, he definitely had a similar style of palate at the start for me. He was more on the sherry sweetness and stuff. So I started following what their recommendations were. I followed other people, and I've told Scott this before on Scotch Dummies, where I followed him and then trying to repeat recommendations. That didn't work out. But just trying to find what works out for you. And then it goes into, like, posting. Like, so for every time I post something that was given to me, I say that it was given to me by blah, blah, whoever it is, right? And you have to look at people. So let's say 
for instance, there's a lot of times, and this is probably just like the behind the scenes where some companies say, hey, Charles, if you uh, please, you know, let's say, Wesleyan, give me this bottle, right? It's like, hey, Charles, we want you to post this at a certain time. So when you see a blast on a week where it's the same bottle every time for every influencer, you know that someone's getting it. Like that, that's the first hint, right? And the second part is you should check their um, their comments. If it says partnered by, add, then you're like, at least they're being they're disclosing it to transparent. you. Transparent. Being transparent about it. But there's some people out there that are not. And for me, that, that personally ticks me off because sometimes, you know, you respect people and you're like, wow, they did this and they didn't disclose it to the audience. And they have a large audience or a small audience. It's still an audience. So Yeah. That's funny because, like, generally if I get a bottle that came in the mail for free, I'll do an unboxing, yeah. show it, and then I'll literally tell people, like, this was free. And maybe, like, the first time I'll post that it was free, and I, I won't put partner or ad because it's not – so the only time I ever even came close to partner or ad was with Spayburn. When you get oh, and because I, of that, uh, I thought it, yeah, the giant like ten gather. page packet, yeah. And I thought I wanted to do it with them, and I was really, I thought I was on board. And then at the end of uh, the whole ordeal, I I couldn't do it. Like for me, it didn't feel genuine, and it felt really weird. And I saw a lot of Instagrammers hop on board and post it, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, yeah. if you agree to those terms and they send you a check in the mail when you're done, fine. But like something resonated in me that just was like no this is not okay and i ended up reneging with them and um i mean <laughs> i hope i still have so, an okay relationship with them but yeah at the same time it's like it's one thing to give somebody something for free and be like hey let me know what you think yeah. and i love brands that are like that and it's a totally different thing when a brand sends you something and then they send you a press packet and, packet, and they yeah. send you a media packet and they're like hey post it this time if you do this 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 and follow these rules you get a check yeah. for a hundred bucks so like yeah, me, me and Wally are a bit different when it comes to this. I know Wally, he, he I, I definitely put him in a pedestal because he, this is more of his outlet. So I personally don't follow the way he works it because he's got a larger audience than I do. I, I feel as though that people come to you for your review of stuff. People come to me for more for like other things. So with me, I don't mind accepting things, but once it comes to the point where um like you said post at a certain time it has to have this the bottle has to be present it has to be at this it has to be the showcase of this that's when i get to a point where it's like you're probably gonna have to pay me now because i'm basically your marketing team you yeah know, i'm not, I mean, I'm not reviewing a... it or trying to talk to people about it it's more of hey this is gonna be your job because they're pay that's a marketing team i don't think that's, that's i mean that's what those right? people are doing though that's the thing and they're they're doing that and it's really not fair to the Instagrammers because a lot of times it'd be like, so full disclosure, since you guys, in case you guys are really curious, I said a hundred bucks, but Spayburn was only paying like 50 bucks. If you did all three things they wanted, they wanted a story, they wanted a post, they wanted some other stuff. I, I hope that somebody doesn't see this and get pissed off about me disclosing this, but it didn't say there was an NDA. Yeah. So here we are. Kevin, um, I've got, so I like, got to pay for stuff. Just, I want to clarify. I've got to pay for stuff. So I'm just letting you yeah. know that I have been paid by brands. Yeah. I've never been paid cause I suck at asking for money. So uh so they said all that stuff and you had to do it and it was whatever as opposed to so i like it better when it's like this and this is gonna sound weird but mm, okay. stick with me denver and lily sent me their scotch glass right because they were like sending it to people with over ten thousand followers so cool i was like i took it i reviewed it i liked it i talked about what i did like and i didn't like and there were some people who didn't like that but it's whatever um and then uh denver and lily sent me their bourbon glass and i did the same thing i did a big comparison between you know the Glen Cairns and the bourbon glasses yeah. And then they sent me a second bourbon glass by accident. So after all that, when we got around to the Traveler and I met Denver finally in San Francisco, uh, when the Traveler came out, I just bought my, I bought it myself. It was 106 bucks plus $20 shipping and handling, whatever, from Australia. So I paid $126. It was awesome. And like, I love the thing. I love the thing so much. I took it into DC when I went skating with a buddy of mine yeah. and ended up taking pictures of it. I didn't do that because they asked me. I didn't do it because, you know, I talked to Denver and we're friends. I didn't do it for any of those reasons. I did it because... I really like I've never been one for flasks and that thing is so versatile and like handy that I could not write about it. So yeah. I just took pictures, wrote a small post about it. Like to me, that's like saying, hey, this is a thing I bought. I think it's valuable. And I think if you like this kind of thing, you should get on it, too. And it's weird because I swear, like Denver and Lily should have been giving me a cut of whatever they were selling, like whatever, how many of her I got sold. Because the number of people who were like, dude, where can I get this? And like, I want to buy it yeah. now. And even when I was telling people, like, oh, it's a hundred bucks and it's here at this website, people were like, oh, sweet, I'll order one. I'm like, what? See, like, in my head, I'm like, I, I think the flask was a better sell at a hundred bucks just because it was metal and stuff was easier. 
The glass double is walled harder. stainless. Heck yeah. So I mean, if you know anything about metal, it's eighteen eighty double walled stainless, and that to me yeah. got me sold. I was like, when I went to buy silverware for my house, I was so set because like such cheap silverware is like eighteen five, eighteen zero. Yeah. That stuff will actually rust because it has like garbage nickel content. Yeah. Yeah, so like when I bought mine, I bought 1810. It's like the best you could buy. Was it expensive? Thank you, Costco. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. But like at the same time, it's quality flatware yeah. that I can have forever. You yeah, know, like I, I get a lot of questions asked, like, oh, is Denver Lively paying you for glass? I'm like, no, I spent freaking like 100 and something bucks like for this Traveler, yeah. like this set. I couldn't get with the ostrich skin. <laughs> I like the kangaroo ball sack, man. But uh, the bourbon, <laughs> the bourbon cast, uh, the bourbon glass was given to me at an event. It wasn't sent to me like other Instagrammers, but um, overall, I still use it a lot too. So, when you when a when Instagrammer or an influencer, if you want to call it, really likes something, they're gonna post it no matter what. So that's that's one key thing. Like I think I've seen you post like a bajillion freaking flasks once. You you see me post this glass, my my cigar cutter, just because I like it so much, and I paid for that and get it for free. So, yeah. but yeah, the 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 key, the key thing is like I've. I've known people, I know people that, and they're nice people, but when a free whiskey comes, I hear from their Instagram page that they really like it, but when I meet them in person or whatever, like, it was okay. And, I, I can't and live that, like and that. That's hard, and to be honest, that's hard for me because it's like <clears throat> these people have large followings. People really trust their judgment. But knowing that, be like, oh, they didn't like this one or this one. It's like, wow, dude, I, I, I trusted your opinion on certain things. Imagine yeah. how your audience feels. So, um, it does get to a point. Um, just full disclosure for us, anyway. Um, Highland Park did pay for our our accommodations over at oh things. So just to let heard, you know, like, I've talked about this so many times. So like, you're gonna see a lot of content out of that. But me personally, and we still paid for the plane flight to we, freaking we Kirkwall. There, but yeah, they yeah. definitely paid for they paid for hotel. They paid for and that's all the tours. They paid for a bus to pick us up. Like it's gonna be pimp. And, but, and we all know that the reason why they're paying for that is because of the exposure that we can both bring. And that it just makes sense. It's it's a win win for both business yeah. companies. So, uh, what Aaron Active just said, I don't trust brand opinions. So here's a funny thing, Aaron Active, and I didn't think about that because for me as uh, an Instagrammer, yeah. I always go directly to ambassadors because for me, that's like my source for yeah, – because when I talk to it, when I talk, talk to an ambassador, usually I'm talking to them and it's off the record. So I can ask them like, hey, what did you really think of this or what did you really think of this? And they'll give me their honest opinion. But I didn't realize – like when I like when I had Tracy on my own show on Scotch Sniff's channel, yeah. uh, like I didn't realize how many people would be against – there were so many people who were like, I don't trust this. And yeah. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like this is Tracy and like no. I trust Tracy. But other people were like, she works for Lynn Fittick. There's no way she's telling me the truth. And I just – I didn't understand that disconnect, but I see it now all the time, so, and I see why people don't trust brand ambassadors. I don't think this, they just don't tra- trust brand ambassadors. They just know that brand ambassadors are getting paid to show a brand. Now, I know some of brand ambassadors will say that, hey, I don't like the 10-year, but I like the 12-year more, that kind of stuff. So if you're looking at the brand in in its entirety, they will give you an honest opinion on what they like in it. And a lot of times, some of them will even say, like, oh, I like the 12. The 18 is a bit too much for what it is and stuff like that, but I like the 12. And yeah. so on and so forth. So if you're talking to a brand ambassador, I would focus on their brand, and they'll give you the gambit on what they like. Because I bet you McAllen people are not going to be all like, oh, I like the number the number 6 or something like that. They're going to tell oh. you what they really – you know, like, hey, <laughs> if I was going to pick a McAllen, I'll pick, like, the 18 or something. They'll give you an honest opinion on what they like in the range. Uh, yeah, Aaron Active, like you said, the online persona. Sometimes, sometimes yeah, yeah, the online persona is different. I know for a fact I can name like three people who work for a large company that own many scotch brands that when they came out with a specific whiskey that I was really excited about, but it turned out to be for me, it was a flop. When I asked these people, even inside the company, they were like, yeah, it's a uh, meh. And I, can probably call and I was like, I was like, I just, I felt, you know, it was off the record again, but I felt justified. I was like, man, th- then why? It's only being pushed so hard because of marketing. It's not being pushed hard because of these people like it. So it, sometimes it's not, I mean, sometimes it is like a car salesman, but you have to realize at the end of the day, that guy's going home and he's still, I don't care how many, I don't care how many Nissans you sell. You probably have a Honda in your driveway. Like if you're no, a car person. And what's fun is like, <laughs> and I'm not going to call out Tracy for this, but like, I think you've asked her, like, besides Glenfiddich, what's your favorite scotch? And I think she said, like, a peated whiskey or something like that. So, like, yeah, she, oh, they'll, she likes a Freud. They'll, they'll, yeah. they'll be honest with you when it comes to that, too. Um, I, I don't even think it would be off the record. It's like, yeah, you, they, they don't always just drink 
Glenn Fittick or Balvini or yeah. Bal- McCallum, Dalmore, whatever. So, uh, Kevin, I completely agree with you. At the end of the day, and that's why Scotch and Stiff got started, to save yeah. people money because $100 bottles are expensive. At the end of the day, it did come down to taste. So knowing somebody's flavor profile and where they come from explains a lot. Yeah. So again, like, like it's just like what, what literally what Charles was saying before. If you know someone's flavor profile and what they love, I was it's because I, I wanted to call you like 40 different names and I was going to say drinking caveman, Charles. but I was like, don't do that. I was like, so if you're listening to what Charles was saying before, if you know somebody's flavor profile, like you know that I love space side and you know that I love lighter scotches and fruitier scotches, well, even more viscous scotches, it depends on what's going on. Yeah. Um, but you know that I don't like peated scotches. When I make a peat recommendation, it's usually for something that somebody who doesn't like, like peat. peat can at least try and be like, okay, this is a good foot in the water. Yeah. Because most of the people who love peat are like dive in the deep end. And it's like, stop, you're you're being weird. It's rape. And so like, <laughs> so understanding <laughs> understanding where people come from, yeah. it, it makes such a huge difference yeah. in understanding where it is that they're trying to take you so that you can save money at the end of the day. So that when yeah. you do go to try it, you're like, oh, okay, I do like this. Thank goodness. Yeah. And tasting is easily in fluids. We yes. won't talk about auto suggestion and everything else because this is a 30 minute show. Yeah. And, the, the key thing is um, <laughs> take the recommendations with a grain of salt, even ours, no matter who you are, right? Take it with a grain of salt, try it at a bar if you can. It'll save you a lot of money. And then Try it outside you, of a bar if you can too, and yeah. like your regular place where you taste things. Or reach so out to factors. any, reach out to your whiskey friends. They'll more than happy to send you samples. We do the same thing to our friends, so it's like, let's do it. Yeah. All right. Well, Although guys, I just packed up three boxes of samples today, I don't know don't. if I'll ever ask for another sample. I have too many. Damn. Yeah. Same. All right, guys. Well, thank <laughs> you so much for joining us. I hope you like the. Oh, do we have five more minutes? Or are we done? Because I have. Oh, we trying... I have something real quick. Sure. What do you have? So. I just want to say thank you guys for commenting on our last couple of videos. And to change that up, we actually have a question right here. And sadly, it's too small, so I can't make it bigger. Man. I have it here. Give me two seconds while we all try to get up for you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have time to get ready for the bottle picture. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, I think I'm just going to hold this rum up because this I have been sipping this rum like crazy. This is so good. What rum are you drink, drinking? So it's 11.3, which is some Jamaican rum. But... Described as brown sugar and stewed rhubarb, followed by coconut flavored sticky rice, diluted. It's got peppermint oil sticky and mamzi madeira really? over spice waffles. So I get, it's called creme brulee flambe. I mm-hmm. get a lot more flambe and creme brulee because oh, I love creme brulee. The, the only thing I don't like about it is when I first opened the bottle, I got like a plasticky taste. Yeah. But it seems to be, seems to be gone. So oh, weird. I don't know what that was all about. It was weird. All right. So whiskey galore uh, messaged a week ago on our ep- on our last episode and asked, "Is it just <clears> me or is it Dalmore 15 one of the better Dalmores, even when considering the cigar malt and the King Alexander?" Mm, not compared to the King Alexander. Yeah. So I agree on that. Over the cigar malt, absolutely. So I agree that it's the one of the better ones besides King Alexander. I do like the 15 over the 12 and the 18, but King Alexander is definitely the higher end one. So. And then we have one more question for you, Wally. Oh, we have a question? Yeah, last that was that was somebody asked me a question? No, all both of us a question. Oh. Uh so we talked about vintages with uh Glenn Roths and uh Bal Blair last time. Uh yeah, okay. and he ma- mentioned that Kilcopen does do vintages, not on their core line though, but they do uh, they don't have uh, but they don't do age statements at all, but instead vintages. So I, I didn't know they did vintages. I didn't know they did vintages on um their special ranges. So I don't like, like that much Kilcopen. Yeah, no. I, when I think of their special ranges, I think of Kilcomen San Egg, Kilcomen, uh, what's the other one? Those are all like NAS, though. Yeah, so I didn't realize, and to be honest, I haven't really had Kilcomen that much, so maybe I should try some soon. I wonder, do you have any in your. I've got a single wall? barrel. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, just, uh, Whiskey Library picked up a single barrel of Kilcomen, and it's actually pretty good. It tastes like butterscotch, Ooh. which is nice. Awesome. Butterscotch and peat, but the peat's not like overbearing. It's nice. Yeah, sorry, Christian. Uh, I'll try and make it bigger next time. It was just a thing I popped in. But um, please, guys, leave your comments below. Um, yeah, let us know what your favorite um, finished American whiskey is. And um, if you have any questions or concerns with any other influencers and stuff like that, let us know. Um, I, I doubt it. but Or go to either Drinking Caveman's Instagram over there yeah. or my own Instagram over wherever it is. There. You can see them on the screen. Anyways, if you go to our Instagrams, we I think we both have stories posted right now that you can click on and submit answers to. Yeah, questions. Uh, yeah. Christian C., I know we didn't get to whiskey and porn. That was like your number one question. Sorry, bud. We'll get to it some other time so that we can answer the question or of John's whiskey. John's one freaking body and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. about accepting your body. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the stuff. Yeah, we'll look at the stuff down below. Actually, wait, I need to take my headphones off. Sorry. You've already done your picture, right? Or you haven't? 
I'm ready when you are. But yeah, let us know what you guys think. Uh, we're trying to get more of your questions. It's hard to figure out sometimes, so now we're doing two, one human and one whiskey one. So that was more of Wally's idea. Um, I know. I just and again, to I know we've been saying this every week that um, we will be doing a whiskey walk on the third of, of May, May in the DC area. In the DC area. So if you guys are there, stories. let us know. Um, I think next week or next next week. Right? Actually, no wait. The show also, on for, the third. For the record, since this is on YouTube, uh, it's May third, two thousand nineteen. Yeah, which is a Friday. So on the thirtieth, our show. Then we're going to be talking about it and. Um, Maybe give some information on where we might go. I actually have a picture that I want to show Wally later down the road. I actually just booked two more distilleries today, and I'm looking to talk to one or two more. So, Boom! Look at Wally. All right, guys. Well, I'm doing a lot of work over here. I know. He's breaking his back. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, thank you all, guys, for chatting with us and stuff. Aaron Active, Christian, Kevin, uh, Jam for All, Cody, you were there. Habs, you were there. So, yeah, thank you, guys. And um, what do you say over here, man? Nice job as always say Pro right. juice. Thanks, Jam for all. Deuces. Produce. No.